Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. I know, looking around me, uh, Christmas Christmas is uh, put away here at the Nunez house. We're heading out of town for a couple days, so we wanted to take it down before we left. But uh, hey, here's the thing about being out of town. It doesn't mean that the Daily Race stops. It doesn't mean that we it doesn't mean that we don't wake up each and every morning and spend some time with the Lord. So I'll be a uh, Doing that from another location, I'm going to be uh, filming a couple ahead of time as well too, uh, just because I'm not sure about internet reception, but uh, anyways, we'll have a backup there. Uh, all of that to say, we've only got two days left in 2022. Can you imagine that? 20, or Yeah, two more days after today. Today's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, New Year's Day. So, so excited to be able to uh, be wrapping up the year with you. We are going to finish this year with some psalms, and then we're going to jump into, um, we're launching a series at Palm Valley called uh, Vision of a Healthy Church. So I'm going to be talking about the, the purpose of the church for the first week of the New Year's, and then we're going to jump into another book study. So uh, very excited to be able to do that with you all. Uh, today we are in Psalm 48, Psalm 48. So this is uh, the last of kind of three three psalms that were written together. Um, they are all about, uh, well, the first one was about uh, praying for God's protection going into battle. Uh, the second one was talking about, uh, which we read yesterday, uh, was the celebration after God's deliverance and the um, the king and everyone going, <laughs> ascending up to the temple to worship God. Uh, but this theme <laughs> of ascension was used uh, well in the early church and, and all the way through for the last 2,000 years uh, to celebrate Ascension Day, the day when Jesus went back up to heaven after his resurrection. Uh, today we're going to be in Psalm 48, the, the last of these, and it's talking about the future and the phrase here that the city of God comes up, um, which is referring to Jerusalem. But as we are uh, also uh, New Testament writers, well, think about this, N New Testament writers, their their song book was the book of Psalms. Uh, they would have known this first century, uh, Paul, uh, all the apostles, uh, Jesus, John the Baptist, are all familiar with the, the Old Testament passages with, with Psalms. So their language of praise would have been out of these psalms. So as they begin to write about, and the Holy Spirit inspires them to record about future events, a lot of this language comes up. So in the book of Hebrews, is it talks about God uh, reigning in his temple. Um, some of the language from this is used as well. So it's not necessarily prophetic, but it is the language on their minds. It's the songs in their hearts, which gets used and comes out in description of things that are, are yet to come still. Uh, it's it's what they, uh, it was on their minds. So I, I'm going to read uh, just a couple passages here from Psalm 48. And then one of them kind of focuses in on what we're thanking God for, or what we're focusing on. So it says this, How great is the Lord, how deserving of praise in the city of our God, which sits on his holy mountain. It's high and magnificent, magnificent. the whole earth rejoices to see it mount zion the holy mountain the king of the city of the great king god himself is in jerusalem's towers revealing himself as its defender so it reminds us why is jerusalem so great because god is present there now at this point as it was written it was god god is his presence is in the ark of the covenant that he he hovers over that that his presence is is actually there among his people in the holy of holies now is that the only place god is located no god is is all present everywhere but a um, an outpouring of his presence a tangible expression of his presence was there uh, so holy that couldn't even go you couldn't go and you couldn't touch the ark of the covenant only once a year could the priests go in and make sacrifices god was there in jerusalem but we also know and this is why the uh, writer of Hebrews referred to this psalm that God is eventually going to take up residence in Jerusalem again. That he's going to create a new Jerusalem, a new heaven, a new earth. Uh, it's going to bring it all back together. Now, does this mean that the actual city of Jerusalem? Not quite sure, but Jerusalem is symbolic of the place where God resides on earth. Uh, that is the presence. So more than likely, it's going to be in the current city of Jerusalem, um, that God's going to come down, build his, uh, make his presence known there, and sit on the throne. Uh, but let's let's forward here a little bit on the um, on the psalm. Let's, let's move up to psalm, to verse 9. And we're going to talk about uh, four different ways here that God, uh, that we worship God. And let me pull up Pastor Paul's amazing notes that he always, always does for me here, so I don't make sure I, make sure I don't forget any of them. All right. 
So it says this in verse 9, O oh God, we meditate on your unfailing love as we worship in your temple. As your name deserves, O oh God, we, you will be praised to the ends of the earth. Your strong right hand uh, is filled with victory. Let the people of Mount Zion rejoice. Let all the towns of Judah be glad because of your justice. So four different things here that we're praising God for. The first is his unfailing love. That God's love is unfailing. He, he loves us more than, than anything else. It, it does not end. It's not based on our actions. And then it says, your name, as your name deserves, O God, you'll be praised to the ends of the earth. God's name, I am, Yahweh, to be, existence, uh, that there is no beginning, no end. But as we've kind of spent all the different names of God, all the different ways that we refer to him, uh, that uh, Jehovah Jireh, uh, God is our provider. Uh, God is our banner. God is our, our 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 rock and our fortress. God is a shepherd. All of these things that describe who God is is gives us reasons to be praised. Uh, your strong right hand is filled with victory. So God's working. He's active in His creation. He isn't hands off God. He's a hands on God. And then let all the towns of Judah be glad because of your justice. That God is going to make things right. Uh, not just patch things together, but but justice, fully right, fully uh, whole and brought together. We attempt justice, but only God is perfect and can instill perfect justice, which is why he came down. So looking at this psalm here, we have God's love, we have God's name, we have his hand, we have his justice, are all reasons to praise him. And all of that is going to be present in Jerusalem, in the city of God, uh, in the future, that God is reigning, uh, as the New Testament writers point to this psalm here. So what a great reminder here. What, what a great reminder of what is to come, uh, what the promise is, and what we can expect of God in the future. All right, uh, let's go ahead and pause here. Uh, it's Thursday. It's Thankful Thursday. So we're going to take a moment here and, and be thankful. And I would encourage you here today on this, this last Thankful Thursday of the year. Uh, what are some things you're thankful for that, that God did over this past year? Not just today, uh, but over this past year. Uh, maybe it's a relationship that was repaired. Uh, maybe it was a, a health scare. Uh, maybe it was a financial thing. Uh, maybe as you, you know, up to this point, you've been, no, there's lots of losses. But as you look at these losses, what were the things that God taught you through those? Uh, what was the, the ways that God revealed himself, even in difficulty and pain? We can be thankful for those as well. It reminds me of the Apostle Paul uh, talking about rejoice in the Lord always, even as he's chained to two jailers, uh, that we can be thankful and rejoice in all situations. Let's pray. God, we come to you today and we come with a heart of thanksgiving for all the things that you've done for us. And God, as we, we read in this psalm, God, uh, we're thankful for your love. We're thankful for your your name, who you are. Uh, God, we're thankful for your, your work, that you're active, that you're in hands on God. And we thank you for your justice. We thank you for saving us and rescuing us and redeeming us. Those are all reasons we give give thanks today. And God, may our day just be full of thanksgiving to you. Just all the great things that you've done for us, all the ways that you've shown yourself faithful to us, uh, all the things that, that we, uh, the good things that we have in, in our lives, and even the difficult things that have come into our lives that have pointed us to good things. We give you all the praise and honor for that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.